hopefully we all know that releases of distros like Ubuntu are named. So you have things like 21.10 Impish Injury, 20.10 Groovy Gorilla, and then going all the way back to the start, you have Warty Warthog. And Debian does the same thing as well. So you have things like Debian 11 Bullseye, Debian 10 Buster, and then the first version, I'm not lying, was called Ham. Look it up. That is a true story. And this isn't just a Debian-based thing. OpenSUSE does it, Fedora does it, and basically a bunch of other distros that have static or fixed point releases. Basically distros that have releases. Not something like, say, Arch, which is a rolling release. And much like with new Ubuntu wallpapers, there's always a certain level of excitement to find out what the new name is going to be. Even though five, ten minutes later, it really doesn't matter, and it doesn't say anything about what the distro is actually going to be capable of. But did you know that it's not just Linux distros that are going to be named? There is one set of names that you don't really ever hear about. Did you know that Linux kernel releases are also named? And these names are included inside of the makefile, as a variable, with 5.17, the next version coming out being titled Superb Owl, the version before that, 5.16, being titled Gobble Gobble, and then 5.15 being Trick or Treat. Now, you might start to notice a bit of a theme here. Many of the modern versions are named after events that are currently going on, or events that are going on when the release candidates start getting made. So Trick or Treat obviously being Halloween, Gobble Gobble being Thanksgiving, and then Superb Owl being a Super Bowl joke. While most of the major kernel releases do have their own unique names, not every single one of them does. Especially in the early days of the Linux kernel, many of the names were rolled over like three or four different versions. Also, when we're talking about minor patches, things like the updates to LTS releases, many of those haven't been named whatsoever and just retain the name of the major release. So let's say we have something like 5.17 is an LTS kernel. So you wouldn't have things like 5.17.128 have its own separate name. It would share the same name as 5.17. That rule doesn't always hold, especially when we start looking at the earlier versions of Linux, but nowadays it's generally going to be the case. So with all this knowledge about Linux kernel naming, you might be wondering what the first name version actually was. What was the version that started this tradition? So the first name version on the git is 2.6.11. That is titled Woozy Wombat. Now you might think this is the version that actually started it. That's not the case because that's just the first version available on the git. Prior to that version, a different source code management system was being used by the kernel. So, what was the first name version then? Well, it wasn't 0.01, .01, the absolute first release of the kernel, and it wasn't 1.0 either, but it was very shortly after that. It was Linux 1.2, released in March of 1995, entitled Linux 95. This was released a few months prior to Windows 95 in August of the same year. Why the kernel started getting named is a question for the maintainers of the time, but considering the first name, I wouldn't be surprised if Linus just wanted to make fun of Windows 95. That seems like a pretty compelling reason, and then going on from that point, hey, we've named it once, let's just keep doing it. While the modern naming scheme is fairly tame, Linus hasn't always been fairly tame, and there have been some really weird names along the way. Some of them were more of the off-brand Ubuntu names, things like 2.6.27, Trembling Tortoise, 2.6.26, Rotary Wombat, and 3.10, Suicidal Squirrel. How we got there, I have no idea, but that's not even the best of it. Best of it, worst of it, really depends on how you look at it. Some of them got really weird. So 2.2, brown paper bag. I I don't know. 2.6.30, homicidal dwarf hamster. 2.6.23, pink farting weasel. 2.6.28, erotic pickled herring. 4.7, psychotic stoned sheep. And my absolute favorite, 2.6.34, sheep on meth. 
Short, sharp, and simple, and straight to the point. Sure, there are some weird names during 4.x and 3.x, but I have no idea what was going on during the 2.x series. That is where the vast majority of the, like, what were you thinking when you named this? How, how did we get here? Why? Why is this the name you chose for your project release? But not just a small throwaway project that no one cares about, the Linux kernel. Now you might be thinking, with the 2.x series, that's got to be like ages ago, back when nobody knew about Linux. 2.x was in the range of 2004 to 2010. That's not even that long ago. But here's the funniest thing about the name. The name is completely useless. And I don't mean, oh, it's a name, it's an aesthetic thing, it doesn't matter. I mean that the name variable is not used in the entire makefile. It is just there to have the name in the makefile. You can go and search for the name variable and you'll see that it's never used in the entire file. So it doesn't get compiled into the kernel or anything like that. It only exists in this spot, which to me seems really strange. Why would you go out of your way to name the kernel, give some of them really, really weird names, and then not have some way for the people running that kernel to query what that name actually is? You would think after the 27 years of this naming being done, someone would think, hey, maybe we should have it be compiled into the kernel. So if you run something like you name, and you know you can see the kernel version, it also will tell you the name of the kernel alongside of that. But nope, that's not how it works. The only way to check what the name currently is, is by going into the make file and then looking at the name. And the only way to track if that name is changed is by checking the git log and seeing at what point it actually has changed. Which to me is really sad. I want more people to know there was a version of Linux called Sheep on Meth. Does it matter whatsoever? Is it going to change your life? Not at all, but hopefully it will brighten your day just a little bit. For this video, I've picked out some of the more notable names and names that have sort of stuck out to me, usually because they're really, really dumb. But this is by no means all of the names out there, and I'll leave a link to the Wikipedia article in the description down below so you can go and check it out for yourself. It doesn't have every single name. Some of the more recent ones like 5.16 and 5.17 are missing, but this is certainly a good start to go from just so you can see some of the ridiculous things that are out there. And this name right here demonstrates exactly why you don't let internet polls name things. Linux 4.0, a massive release of Linux, herder, I'm a sheep. And you know what? I think that's the best point to end this video. So let me know your thoughts on some of the names in the comment section down below. Maybe you found something weirder than the ones I have found, and I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. A gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.